Welcome to the final video seminar for H10 EMA. This week we've looked at motors, generators and efficiency and then we've gone back to look in a bit more detail at how long it takes to charge a capacitor and how we can calculate both the voltage across the capacitor and the current in the circuit in those split seconds it takes for the circuit to charge. This is known as transient analysis. In this short video, I'm going to go back over the basics of motors. So this is how we can pass a current through a wire, and in the presence of an external magnetic field, those magnetic fields will interact and produce a force. We can make this a rotational force, and this is the basis for so many electrical devices. One of the things I've done in this seminar is pull apart a small toy so we can see in a bit more detail how it works. I hope you've enjoyed the course. Good luck in your exam and I'll see you next semester for, you've guessed it, H10 EMB. A couple of props to introduce you to before we get started. So here I've got a North Pole and a South Pole and this is a magnet. This is a permanent magnet in this case. Yes, I know you can't have a North Pole without a South Pole, so imagine there's actually a bit of a horseshoe magnet around here, but I've just removed that so you can actually see. This can either be a permanent magnet or it can be made using electromagnets. I've also got a piece of wire and this is going to use exactly the same principles as before when I had a straight piece of wire. All I've done is I've just bent it round into a little square shape. In a real motor you'd have lots and lots of coils but I've just got one here just for demonstration purposes so it's nice and clear. So we're going to put, so we're going to put the current through our coil so it's going to go in one side along round and back out again. Yes, there's going to be all sorts of connections going on down here, but we don't need to worry about these for now. Think about the magnetic field that's going to be generated by this wire. So in this part, the current is going in this direction, so we'll put our thumb in that direction, and we can see that that magnetic field is going to be round in that direction. When we get round to the opposite side, the current is now going downwards in the opposite direction. So this is going to make the magnetic field go in the other direction. Once you've got that, what we're going to do is we're going to put this wire into the center of our magnets. And now the two magnetic fields are going to interact. So the magnetic field from the permanent magnet is going to interfere with the magnetic field produced by our current carrying wire. What's going to happen is, when the current comes in on the south side, it's going to be forced upwards. And on the north side, when the magnetic field is going in the other direction, it's going to be forced downwards. And this is going to make, and this is going to make our coil spin round, quite happily. And it will spin round and round and round. And this is the basis of how we move anything using electricity. So you can connect whatever you want to this spinning part, and it will turn very happily. Here we've got the constituent parts of a little mechanical toy that drives along. So there's a switch on the bottom which we can turn on and then it will move. So the switch on the bottom is down here and it's got this on and off function. So we've left it on, on because it'll make our life a bit easier. What This is just attached then to the battery pack and then this is our main chassis. These wheels at the back are actually passive and they're going to be moved by the motion of the motor. This bit here is actually the motor and it's really quite a small part of the toy. We can see down this end, this is the motor shaft that will go all the way through. Then we've got the electrical connections just at the bottom which we're going to connect to and the other end of this shaft actually has like a coil on it which we're going to use to interact with the rest of the machinery. This is the um, housing, so this contains the gear system and the other wheel. So what happens is if you twist this cog it means that um, it will then twist the bigger cog which will make the wheel go round on the end of the chassis. I've removed this wheel from over here just because it makes it easier to house it back together and you can get the general idea. So what we're gonna do is we're going to slot the motor into this bit of the housing and that motor is then gonna provide the motion to turn this. So let's put that in. And you can see here that that um, the coils on the end of the motor slot against this wheel. So now when the shaft of the motor spins, it will spin this cog, which will then spin the wheel. So let's put it back together and see if it works. Let's get our electrical connections on. 
So this is a little bit damaged because I had to pull it apart to make it work, but you should be able to hear the motor spin. There you go. That's the motor spinning. And as the motor spins, it will then turn that gear system. We can hear. There we go. And that then spins the wheel. Which drag my so I turn it around to see that wheel spinning as I push the connections together. So you can see this little system and see how it works here. So as we power the motor on, it turns this screw type fitting, which then spins this cog, which is attached to another cog, which will spin the wheel that that cog is attached to on the axle. So it's quite a simple little thing. And what I want to get across is just how small and how powerful these little motors are. And you'll find them in everything. The vibration alert on your mobile phone is powered by a very small motor. They are in so many different things and we don't often really think about them. We just take them so much for granted. So this is how we can move things using electricity. And this very much is the interaction between electrical engineering and mechanical engineering, which is why it's often referred to as electromechanics.